So hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our uh, Contentful webinar. Um, Contentful uh, and Root. So today we will learn about how to create uh, static pages using Roots that are backed by Contentful. Today, um, we actually have a pretty exciting webinar. As always, I am Cesar from Contentful. And uh, with me today, joining in from uh, New York, uh, we have Josh Raleigh from Card Creative. Hey, everybody. Um, so if, if you are not acquainted with uh, Contentful yet, uh, Contentful is a, a an API-centric content management system um, that can be used, you know, as it's API-centric, and uh, that's sort of our motto. Uh, it, it, it's supposed to back any kind of uh, any kind of experience, be it mobile, um, um, web web experiences. There's people using it for uh, smart TVs, even and any kind of wearable. Um, but today, actually, we're focusing on uh, how to create quickly create uh, web pages. Um, so I will pass along to um, to Josh quickly. And uh, if you do have any questions, by the way. Feel free to write them throughout the webinar on the on the web chat, and we will address them at the end. So, Josh, I'll make you right now a presenter. All right, cool. Thanks, Azer. Um, so today, I wanted to go over. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about how we built a. Uh, uh, static websites that can still be powered by a CMS that uh, non-developers can still use static content, but we'll still get all the benefits of static. Um, just, I'm going to first start off with just a little intro about um, who we are as a company, and then um, get into the second part uh, a bit of a technical demo of how you can get started. Um, so a little bit about us. Uh, we're a digital agency based in Brooklyn called Carrot Creative. Um, we're owned by Vice Media, um, which is um, a pretty large global media company. And uh, we do all sorts of work. We do, um, you know, uh, we make content. We're, we do strategy, digital strategy, but we also uh, build apps. And uh, here is a uh, kind of an overview of some of the brands we work with. Um, so it's a lot of kind of larger brands that do see. Um, do have quite large audiences. A lot of our stuff is integrated with social, and uh, we have um, a lot of eyeballs kind of going to our sites. And um, so we um, let me let me discuss how we kind of got to the conclusion of using uh, kind of a static-based CMS for our projects. So to start off, um, as a digital agency. Um, we have uh, kind of a different set of problems compared to, say, a product team at a startup. Um, we have a lot of different concurrent projects that are going on that are usually somewhat short-lived, um, but they usually have a hard deadline when they get launched, and at that moment, they have to scale up immediately because we usually have um, media dollars being put behind it um, through, like, you know, uh, sponsored ads on Twitter or Facebook posts, things like that. Um, so we need to be able to perform immediately, and we don't really have time to scale up. And uh, a lot of the sites are primarily uh, content-based. Um, there might be a couple small user interactions, but we'll try to outsource those to kind of um, kind of third-party cloud services as much as we can. And we also need to quickly build sites from scratch um, quite frequently. So. Um, one of our big problems is like how we how we can get started very quickly and get kind of the scaffolding of a project um, started. So our solution to kind of a lot of these problems was to build static sites. Um, the reason being they're very cheap, so we have a lot of projects that we don't want to spend a lot of money on hosting. Um, they're really fast and they're scalable. Um, there's really you can't really get faster than just um, serving up a static file. Um, and it's very low complexity. It's easy for uh, developers to hop in between projects and not have to worry about, you know, knowing, you know, the database credentials, keeping track of monitoring, all the all the kind of overhead that goes along with kind of traditional, say, like WordPress data back, uh, database back CMS type system. 
Um, so we developed in-house uh, our own static compiler called Roots. Um, you can go check it out at roots.cx. And um, it, it works really great. It's been built uh, with a very flexible extension API, so we can kind of um, build static sites with still the power of uh, it's built. It's written in uh, Node.js, so we have all the power of Node.js that we can dump into um, our static sites. It can uh, compile all sorts of higher-level languages like uh, SAS and Stylus for your uh, CSS mm -hmm. style sheets. You can write CoffeeScript if you want to write that instead of JavaScript. Um, you can use Jade templating. Um, that's kind of our preferred tech stack, um, and it worked out really great for us. But the only problem was after we built it is that it's it's not super client friendly um, using a static site compiler. Um, we kind of started out by storing the data for our sites in uh, YAML and Markdown files, just kind of in our uh, in our GitHub repos. And uh, we had a couple of attempts in house where we tried to build a CMS that could kind of manage those static files. But you know we we kind of have limited resources. We didn't have um, enough. Time and uh, we couldn't commit enough time and effort to kind of see those through. It's a, a lot of work. Um, so what ended up happening was a lot of the updates to the content sites we're doing still had to go through a developer, and you know there'd be delays. You'd get an email a couple hours later um, was when the change would make. So we wanted to find a way to uh, give our colleagues a way to edit the content on our on our sites, um, however, still preserve all the benefits. And, and gains we get from keeping everything static instead of having um, them editing a database through, say, like a WordPress. So we were thinking about these problems, and around the same time, um, we we came across Contemporal, um, and that was kind of a big thing for us. Um, we liked a lot of things about it. Um, the fact that it was API based um, gave us a lot of confidence that it would be flexible and kind of like in the future, if we, you know. Whatever we need to do with this data, it's accessible in a very um, easy to use format. Um, we found that the data models being used in the, the content models um, were very flexible and robust. They could, uh, a big thing is that you can link associations between different content types, which uh, lets you get into build some pretty uh, flexible custom stuff on, on the platform. And most importantly, um, that's going to factor into building a static CMS is the webhooks component. Uh, being able to have an outgoing message sent to any service saying that you know some content has changed on Contentful, with that in hand, we could then you know have some kind of service that would, uh, once it receives that webhook, uh, redeploy our site, and our compiler can then pull down the new data from Contentful, um, and our website will be uh, good to go and up to date. So. Uh, a little bit after that, we also um, found out about a company called Netlify. Uh, they're a uh, static hosting platform. They have a very great API, so we've uh, built them into our tools. And one thing that's nice about them is that they can accept an incoming webhook and then uh, trigger a deploy for your static site. And uh, Netlify supports uh, Node and Ruby-based build tools, so we can we can use our roots. Um, our root static compiler with Netlify, and uh, every time you know content changes on Contentful, the webhook goes over to Netlify, and our site gets updated. It gets pushed out to a CDN, and you know it's been really fantastic, just super super lightning fast. Um, so if you want to put it into a little diagram here, um, let's just focus on kind of the left side here. Um, so now we have you know, the people managing the content, the editors of our site, are publishing entries to um, Contentful. Uh, the Contentful webhook will send out to the incoming webhook at uh, Netlify. Netlify will then trigger a build. Um, it'll run, so Roots is a command line tool, so it'll actually just run Roots compile. Um, and then Roots has an extension, a little plugin, called Roots Contentful that gives a nice little wrapper that'll fetch the data from Contentful. Um, we can also set it up with webhooks from GitHub, so you can uh, it'll fetch the latest code on your master branch. It'll compile it and deploy it into a production CDN. And um, you can have custom domains and all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot of great, great features that they have. Um, and if you want to learn more about kind of this setup, 
Uh, we wrote a blog post about it at caret.iscoding uh, slash static underscore CMS if you want to learn more about that. So we've been uh, trying this out for the last couple months. Um, we have a couple projects that are on this kind of workflow right now. We have our own, first, our own uh, company website, our blog, our, um, our press links, our case studies, they're all managed through Contentful using this system. Um, we have uh, a company called Fornino, uh, it's a, kind of a friend of the company, and um, we're managing, they're a pizzeria restaurant, so we uh, manage their menu items, their locations are all being managed through Contentful. And then we also have some upcoming projects. Uh, we did a website for uh, the Nature Conservancy for Saving Elephants, and um, we're going to take a, we're going to kind of revisit this project and uh, update it, hopefully, to uh, use the same workflow. And then we also have some internal projects for our uh, corporate overlords at Vice that we're uh, that we're going to uh, use the same architecture for. So we're really excited um, uh, by the potential of kind of uh, what what we can do with this. Um, but, you know, that's kind of enough talking. I just want to give a quick, so this part's going to be a little bit more technical, but uh, hopefully it'll be a good demonstration of just how quickly you can get set up with, um, with this workflow. Um, so first, just a little intro. I'm going to be using a tool that we've also built here at Carrot called Sprout, and it's just a uh, project templating tool. You can run it on the command line. And uh, we just use it to uh, build a lot of, um, you know, skeleton uh, project templates for kind of the typical stuff we build here in-house. And one of them is called Sprout Static CMS. So I'm going to use this to kind of bootstrap this website pretty quickly. Um, and I recommend you do so too. And we have, you know, plenty of documentation on kind of how things work. Um, but if you get started right here, um, the first step you're going to have to take is to install Sprout. Uh, I already have it installed, so you would just run npm install here. And then to add a new template, um, you run Sprout add, um, and then you give the template a name here, and then you give it the GitHub URL. Um, so you, I would just get started by uh, you know, copying this right here and pasting it in. Um, I actually already have the template. If I run Sprout List, you can see I have static CMS right here. Um, and that should be enough to get us started. So the first command that I'm going to run to get um, the project initialized is going to be Sprout init static CMS. That's going to be the name of the template. And then I'm also going to pass in the folder I want um, Sprout to create for us. So I'm going to call it Contentful Test Blog. And um, I'll run it. And it's going to ask me a few questions. I'm just going to answer them. And then there's some, so you're going to need, before you get started with this, you're going to need to grab um, some information from Contentful and Netlify to get this template set up. Um, I already have it ready, and uh, I have some tokens that I'm going to use. Uh, don't worry, I, uh, this is for a test account, and I'm going to revoke these immediately after, so um, don't worry about that. Um, so I'm going to put in my Contentful delivery token. I'm going to put in my Contentful management token, which is going to uh, come in useful later when um, there are some generators that Sprout gives us later that's going to use that token to create content types for us on Contentful. I'm going to put in the space ID. Uh, I, I already have a Contentful account kind of set up, but it has nothing in it right now, but I already have these, these, uh, this information here just to get us started pretty quickly. Um, and then our Netlify token right here. Uh, enter in all that information. Awesome, the project's been set up. Now I can go into that folder and I'm going to run npm install, which is going to install all the dependencies of the project. And while that's running, uh, I'm just going to go over the... Uh, ooh, that's not where I want to go. All right. Um, okay, so I'm just going to show kind of the directory structure of the project. So in a Roots project, we have an assets folder. This will contain your CSS images and JavaScript. Um, and then inside our views folder, we'll have, we're using Jade here. That's kind of our preferred templating 
um, templating language, but Roots is flexible enough so that if you can use um, you can use a whole sort uh, assortment of different uh, templating languages. Uh, you can check out the website for more docs on that. Um, so we have you know our general layout, we have our starting index page, we have some like kind of uh, uh, just boilerplate starting content here. Um, if we go into app.coffee in Roots, app.coffee is going to be your main configuration file, and it's basically just a node file, so you can actually treat it exactly as such, and it just needs to export uh, this uh, configuration file here, and you'll see that the template is already set up. Um, I have the Roots Contentful extension being loaded in here, and then I also have it being passed into this extensions array here, and that's kind of how you set up. Uh, this is kind of the plugin interface for Roots. So it's loading in config from a separate file called Contentful, and this has all the tokens that I passed into the template, kind of all set up for me, and kind of just some starting information on just how to get started pretty quickly. Um, and the rest of the other thing I want to show you in here is ship.com, which is going to have our uh, ship is a, another internal tool we've built here at Carrot that handles the deployment of static files. And um, this is uh, this is what it's going to use to deploy our site. Um, so now that it is. So now it should be done installing all our dependencies here. Uh, I just want to show, so there's nothing in this in this, uh, this space here on Contentful yet, but uh, I'm going to create a blog, start creating a blog, and I can easily get started with that uh, by using Sprout. So there's a nice little generator I can run, Sprout uh, run static CMS, and then I'm going to pass in model, which is the name of the generator. And then I'm going to pass in first the, uh, the name of the content type I want to make, so I'm going to call it post. And um, then I can pass in, say, like a field called title. And if you ever use Rails, it's kind of a similar syntax here. Um, it's going to be title text. And um, let's give it body text. And then let's also have a blog post have an image. So I'll do image asset. And I'll do uh, a slug, which is going to be the URL uh, path I'm going to give it. That's going to be a symbol. And then uh, let's give it a date. So I'm going to run this generator here. And it says it ran. And now if I go to my demo block here, and let me refresh the page here, uh, you'll see that I have a post content type here. Um, and you can see it has all the fields I passed in, and they have the corresponding field types uh, associated with them, which is great. So uh, just to show that this all works now, um, I'm going to I'll limit to create entries, and then we'll have them load into our Roots project. Um, so if I go into entries here, uh, oops. Um, oh, I have to activate this, sorry. Just activate this content type. And I'll add a new post here. And I'll give it a title, uh, Doge's Rule. They are the best pets. And then let's say add an image here. I got I have this image here. Um, publish this. I can close this out. And uh, the slug will be the kind of the URL, so I'll just call this Doge, and I'll say this is for today. And I'll publish this. Um, so now I want to get this into my Roots project. Um, so one bit of information I'm going to need now that my content type is created is I'm going to need to give Roots my, uh, the ID of the, the content I'm trying to load. So if I go to this post uh, content type here, go to info, and I'll just grab this ID right here. If I go back to my Roots project, back to my Contentful configuration, you'll see here there's content types here. So this is where you're going to load in all the different content types you want to access in Roots. I'm going to just remove this placeholder object here and uncomment these first two lines. Um, this posts is going to be 
the key in my views that I can access this data from. And then uh, ID, I'm going to put that ID in. Uh, cool. And then now that that's in there, I'm going to go back to my index.jade here. And I'm going to uncomment out this. And you'll see here I have four posts in contentful.posts. That post is that the whatever name you give this key right here when you're configuring this. Um, and then we have uh, it just iterating over each one and printing it out. Um, the body is actually uh, compiling the markdown for us. And then I'll also add, say, you know, the image here. Um, Roots Contentful gives us a nice little helper called asset, so I can just pass in post.image and uh, it'll access the URL from, from this object because Contentful's API returns it as an object. And then I'll also maybe have the date here um, and I'm just going to get rid of this stuff at the top. And then now if I run Roots Watch, which is going to compile the site and open it in a browser for me. You'll see that this is my index page and I have, um, I have all the information coming in from Contentful and it's working out great, which is fantastic. Um, so, you know, the other thing is in a blog, you probably want a uh, single standalone page for each entry. Um, you can you can configure that in Roots Contentful as well. So let's say instead of you know on this index page, I just want the title and um, the body or not the body, the title and the date. Uh, but the other stuff I want on the single page. So I am going to go to uh, this Contentful config file right here. If I look down here, in order to create single page views for each blog post, I'm going to use these two uh, options here: template and path. And uh, what template does is I'm going to give it a path to a, a Jade template file that it's going to pass every single entry in that content type into and compile uh, a file out of it. So I'm going to put in views slash uh, blog dot Jade. And then uh, for path, this is going to determine the URL that it's going to spit out. So it's like going to be the path to the, uh, the uh, outputted HTML file. So for this, I'm going to put uh, blog slash uh, entry dot slug. Uh, that's kind of what we're using that for in the CMS. And now I just need to make uh, inside my views folder that blog dot jade file. And inside here, I can take this information, the full, the full information of the blog post, and have that output here. And then on the index page, I can have, um, maybe I'll just put just uh, the date, the title, and then maybe I also want to put a link, you know, I want to link from the index page to this single page view. Um, I can do that because now that I've enabled the, um, the single page views, I'll also have a new property on the post object called underscore URL, which is going to be the path to that file. So hopefully if I did everything right here, uh, if I go back and restart the washer here, title of, oh, uh, the other thing is in your single page views, you're going to need to, so I called it post here because I called it post right here, but in the single page views, it actually passes it in uh, as called entry instead of, so you just need to make sure in your single page views, uh, each entry is going to be passed in and ex accessible through uh, an entry object here. So now, uh, if I run Roots Watch, so now it just has the title and the date, and then if I click in here, it'll open up, it has the path that I specified, and it has all the rest of the information. So, and then that's, I mean, that's, that's how fast it is to kind of get this all set up. Uh, I don't have any styling here, but uh, I think you can see just from how fast that got set up is, is Contentful saves us just a ton of time in terms of like backend configuration. And um, now what I can do is I can send this up to Netlify. 
Uh, I actually named this incorrectly, so let me just change this real quick. Uh, I already have the project set up here on Netlify, and with the with the with the template I, I set up, there's actually a command just called make deploy that's going to run the necessary commands to push push it up to uh, Netlify. So it'll it'll compile the site and then it'll ship the results up to Netlify. Um, it's deploying it now. It's live, so now I can go to the uh, this URL and see that I have my site online now, which is fantastic. Um, and then, so the last step is to get this all working. Is that I want uh, you know my colleagues to be able to just edit this on Contentful and have it automatically update. Um, so I just need to set up the webhooks now, and that's pretty straightforward. So in Netlify, I'm just going to go down here, and there is a, uh, a webhooks um, section here. I'm just going to delete this one, um, and I'll add a new one for Contentful. Uh, copy this URL right here, and uh, inside of Contentful, I go to webhooks here. And I'll make a new one, give it that URL, create webhook. Um, one thing I do need to do is actually get this on uh, GitHub because Netlify is going to push this onto uh, pull from GitHub, the latest code. So I just need to make sure that it's up there. Um, let me just quickly configure that. I have a, just have to give it the remote address. Uh, All right, and then now with these webhooks in place, we can go to this this build section to kind of watch this. Um, now, if I go to my entries here, and let's say I go to this Doge post I have, and I, I want to say uh, dogs drool and Doge's drool instead, and republish this. If I go to Netlify, I'll just refresh the page real quick. You'll see that right now a build was triggered. It's in process right now, um, and that's from the webhook being sent from Contentful. And we can look at the log of you know where it's going. Uh, it's pretty quick. Netlify caches a lot of stuff, so uh, the site is live now. And if I refresh this page, hmm. all right, that that did not change. Um, in any case, the uh, the expected result would be that it would change here. Um, I might just be missing something, but uh, other than that, that's kind of the workflow we have going, and that's how we manage, um, you know, our our own personal website. We have our entire blog being served up by Contentful, and uh, it's worked out really great. And uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much the overview of uh, how we do it here at Carrot. Um, just want to give a shout out to Carrot for uh, uh, just letting you know if you're interested in this type of stuff. Uh, Carrot is hiring, and um, so we have uh, a ton of open source tools we work on. Uh, Roots is one of them. Sprout is one of them. Um, Ship, uh, and we just have a whole assortment of things. And uh, so if you're interested in kind of this workflow and getting involved, uh, we welcome you know contributions. On open source, and we're also looking for uh, full-time developers. So if you're interested, give us a shout. Um, you can go to our uh, GitHub page at github.com slash carrot. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, and if anybody has any questions or anything like that, uh, I can answer them now. Uh, hold on, where did this go? OK, so there is already one question, and apparently, yeah. Okay, what happens if you don't have an image in Contentful? Um, you mean like not have an image as as one of the fields in your in your in the content type you you make? I mean, it's it's up to you whether you include an image or not. I mean, it's super flexible. So this is not okay. It's a field, but you didn't populate it. Are you talking about this field right here? Uh, 
oh, if you don't populate it, um, that asset helper, I think it should just, it should just, you'll just have an empty string as the source for your image. So what you can do is you can, if you need there to be an image, you can uh, go to your content model 